please welcome Dan Murphy. Hey, Mike. Hey, Dan. Thanks, Dan. Thanks for inviting me today. Glad you're here. Mike, what we're going to try to attempt to do today for yourself and for the people at home is give uh, all of us a few tips, a few ideas that's hopefully going to help me improve our game. Okay, what we're going to try to do today is to break down this instruction into four different areas. The grip, the stance, the approach, and the follow-through. And each one of those areas uh, relates directly or indirectly to timing. And that's the second thing I'd like to uh, emphasize. Timing is everything in the game of candle pin bowling. Hopefully what we're going to accomplish today is to get everyone to be consistent from the time they pick the ball up off the rack until the time they deliver toward the target. All right, so we start with picking up the ball, I would guess. Exactly. We'll go right into the grip, yeah. Mike. Any safety features so I don't get my fingers mangled? Ex well, that's a good point, Mikey. What, what I'd like to have you do is the thumb on one side of the ball and fingers okay. on the other. And for you people right. at home who have youngsters that are going to be involved in this game, it's a very good thing for them to start to practice because I've seen some uh, nasty accidents with those balls coming back in the ball return. Okay, a couple things to watch in the grip. You notice the space between Mike's palm of his hand and the ball. Okay, there should be a space there. That space, of course, the size of the space depends on the size of your hand. But what this enables us to do is to keep a fingertip control of the ball, which we need. We don't want the ball sitting in the palm of our hands. Notice the thumb and index finger of Mike's hand. It's at a 45 degree angle or there, thereabouts. And also the other four fingers spread evenly across the ball. Uh, I, I guess I don't really want to squeeze the ball or, or grip it. It's just a nice, light, relaxed position. Okay, we want a firm grip on the ball, okay. but not too tight. Okay. Okay, let's go right. right into the stance then, Mike. All okay? Right. What I want you to do is to stand in the middle of the approach. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want you to be relaxed. Keeping in mind that when we start our approach, our slide ending position is going to be four to six inches behind the foul line. Okay? All right. I want you uh, facing the target mm -hmm. in a relaxed position. Okay, the, the ball should be held in a position between the nose and the waist. Okay. okay. I prefer it about uh, waist high or slightly mm -hmm. above waist high. I feel right. real comfortable at that position. Okay, the foot, uh, I like to stagger the, the left foot in front of the right. However, a lot of people have both feet together, which is perfectly all right. No real big difference, is there? No, there's no advantage or disadvantage to that. It's, it's, again, personal preference. And if you get with your local instructor, I mean, he's going to help you with a lot of different things that make you feel real comfortable up here. But I like mine staggered. Okay. okay. The other thing I'd like to mention is that I like the weight a little bit on the right foot, slightly uh, more weight on the right. This enables me to take that first step with the left foot with no problem. And we are talking about right-handed bowlers, I may add, uh, mention to you people at home. Those of you who are left-handed are going to have to reverse some of the things that we're talking right, about. Before we go any further with the lesson, maybe we should for a moment address the issue of etiquette because a lot of times bowling centers are crowded and you don't want people getting in your way and you don't want to get in their way. So how do we know well, who's got the right of way, Dan? Uh, that's true. And for you people at home, uh, etiquette is a, is a big part of Candleton bowling. It's a big part of any sport. And what I'd like to, uh, to emphasize today is the fact that uh, the bowler on the right usually has the right of way. Now I say that if I'm the bowler on the right and I'm up ready to make my approach, but all of a sudden I want to take another second or two. I should step back, indicate this to both bowler on my right and my left, so if they're ready to go, they can proceed with their approach. The second thing, um, and I know this is indicative of everyone, is that when I get a, a nice game going, I seem to get a little extra body mm -hmm. English, yeah, extra body that, motion. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I want to confine that to the width of my length, yeah. so I'm not disturbing the bowlers the right and the left. And one other technique that I personally use, that I want to look and see where the bowler on my right starts on the approach, as well as the bowler and left. If those bowlers are on that particular spot or close to that spot, then I should take the few extra seconds and let them proceed because they're almost ready to go. Okay, just common courtesy, we all enjoy the game that much more. That's right. All right, back to uh, the center of the lane and the, uh, the footwork. Okay, we're going to now talk about the basic three-step approach. Now, some of you use three, some of you use four. Uh, I've seen people use five, okay? My philosophy here is to keep it to a three-step approach because there's uh, less chance of us making a timing error because we're taking less um, less move we're using less movement to get to the foul line. Okay, Mike, we're going to start or talk about the three-step approach. Mm -hmm. And for the right-handed bowler, it's a simple three-step approach of left, right, and left. But what I'm going to do is break down that those three steps, keeping in mind that after I get the approach down and we talk about it, I would like the fluid motion continuous as soon as I start my approach. But for the uh, sake of the video, we're going to break it down, show you a couple techniques, a couple things to look for as far as timing. All right. Okay. I got my feet staggered. Position of the ball is just above waist. The first step is the push away step. Okay. It's with the left foot. And at the same time, as you can see, I'm starting now to bend at my knees and at my waist. 
At the completion of this first step, you'll notice that the arm and the ball is at approximately a four o'clock position. So continue through with the second step, my right foot coming through, the arm swing now starts back. You'll notice that the arm and the leg pass at approximately a six o'clock position, and I complete that second step, and at this step, Mike, uh, at the completion of this step, you see my arm swing is at the, at the height of the backswing, mm -hmm. parallel with the floor or slightly above the parallel position. Is there any reason why Danny couldn't wind it up and really, really wing it? Why just parallel to the floor? Well, you'll see a lot of the great can open bowls probably have a bigger backswing than that. But again, my theory is that the extra movement of that arm is going to create some problems when you release the ball as far as the timing goes. Okay. So parallel with the floor, maybe slightly above parallel. Okay, I'm into that second second step. Now the third step or the slide, I'm going to reach the, the foot and the arm, reach at the approximately the same time at the foul line. Okay, and right into uh, the follow through, which is nothing more but a continuation after I release the ball up toward the target. Okay, now what I want to check here, Mike, is my sliding foot should be pointed toward the target pin as well as my follow through and my arm toward the target. Okay, this enables my shoulders and my chest to be squared to the target as well. All right. Is there any, uh, maybe we can talk for just a moment about a couple of the common problems that many bowlers have. There must be a couple of things that you as an instructor see on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, the, the two things that come to my mind, and I'm sure you people can relate to this at home, how many of you have thrown the ball, after you release the ball, you act like a ballerina at, at the foul line. You Not deliberately, your, but it just happens. Right, you lose your balance. <laughs> yeah. What's happening is that you're taking that three-step or four-step approach toward the foul line, the momentum of the body is going forward, natural tendency after you release the ball is to want to stand up. So the body's moving forward this way and you want to stop that and, and create a position or a movement of upward movement and it's causing you to lose your balance. Now a quick review of our four main points. We'll start with the grip. The ball rests comfortably yet firmly in the palm of your hand with fingers spread evenly. Next, the stance. Stand erect yet relaxed at the center of the approach. Eyes on target and the ball between nose and waist. The approach. Slight bend at the waist and fluid movement without rushing to the foul line. And finally, the follow through. We'll give you two versions. First from behind. Remember, stay down at the line. And extend your release upward while staying down at the line until you're absolutely sure the ball is well on its way.